We grow when we give. We grow when we give. We grow when we give. Nosotros crecemos cuando damos. We grow when we give. 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 Welcome to ROG, Return on Generosity, a podcast celebrating generosity at work. Not financial giving, giving valuable time, alternative perspectives, and genuine collaboration. Welcome to episode 101. 101 makes me think of baseline courses in college, foundational. And that's appropriate for what we're speaking about today, gratitude. It's the foundational element to generous leadership. And it's November, the month most associated with giving thanks. As you know, we record these odd number episodes on YouTube for greater engagement. Haven't seen a ton of action there yet, so please subscribe and share your thoughts and perspectives. Gratitude is the starting place for generous leadership. We've heard it said that gratitude turns what you have into enough. Gratitude is the best attitude. Gratitude changes everything. Sounds great, but what is it? Gratitude is similar to joy, happiness, and peace. It's easier to feel it than describe it. So let's envision people and things you're grateful for. Who from your past has made you a better person? What's a setback from the past that's given you perspective? It didn't go as hoped, but it provided wisdom. What's a recent example of someone who made you laugh, really laugh? Think of a person you're deeply appreciative of at work. Think about who they are and what specific attributes make them stand out. Feel that? Being grateful feels good. We know that. And believe it or not, it's been researched. In one study with more than 1,000 people ages 8 to 80 found that people who practice gratitude consistently experience a host of benefits, physical benefits like stronger immune system, less bothered by aches and pains, lower blood pressure, psychological benefits like higher levels of positive emotion, more joy and pleasure, more optimism and happiness, social value like being more helpful, generous, compassionate, forgiving, and feeling less lonely and isolated. Gratitude is the willingness to recognize and notice what is versus focusing on what is not. One of the many myths of gratitude is that it's sunshine and rainbows. That is not true. Gratitude is available to us even in the hardest of circumstances, losing a job, having an accident, losing a loved one. The reason we experience so much pain when we grieve is because we loved so deeply. To see it through the lens of gratitude, think of those who never met or deeply loved what you lost. Gratitude is the appreciation for the opportunity to have had that love alongside the excruciating sadness of the loss. The science on appreciation tells us that gratitude is not only lacking in most work environments, but even a little bit of appreciation can improve employee experience, culture, elevate performance, make people feel better about themselves, and causes a ripple effect. In a series of experiments, it was discovered that hearing thank you from a supervisor gave people a strong sense of both self-worth and efficacy. The study also revealed that the expression of gratitude has a spillover effect. People become more trusting of each other and more likely to help each other out. Most reported that hearing thank you at work made them feel better about themselves, feel motivated, work harder, and be more productive. People are longing to have a boss who appreciates them. Not only do we crave gratitude at work, 93% of the 2,000 people in another study agreed that grateful bosses are more likely to succeed. Check out Frank Blake's episode 98, You Get What You Recognize and Celebrate. We don't need a research study to tell us that gratitude helps us feel rewarded for our efforts and more engaged at work. We know how that feels. And yes, we have preferences on how we want gratitude expressed. Some appreciate a handwritten note, Some would prefer an award ceremony. No matter how it's done, we all like appreciation. But here's the curious and interesting part. We likely all agree that it feels good. We want to receive it. But how about giving it? Almost all respondents reported that saying thank you to a colleague makes them feel happier and more fulfilled. 
but on a given day, only 10% acted on that impulse. And more than half of them said that they either never express gratitude at work or they do so only once a year. Once a year. Studies show people are less likely to express gratitude at work more than any place else, and that's where we spend most of our time. In short, gratitude is actively suppressed on the job, even to the point of robbing us of happiness, joy, connection. Not to mention the bottom line benefits of teamwork, efficiency, retention, and trust. So what if we expressed more gratitude at work? What difference would that make? I wonder. The ROG takeaway tip, how to apply what we've learned to our own work and lives, us express your gratitude and appreciation. The colleague that you thought of who you are legitimately grateful for, like if they go on vacation, you feel it. If heaven forbid they left, their absence would be unbearable. Those people. Tell them. Thank them. Thank them specifically for why you appreciate them, and please just don't include what they do that will only validate their probable current strategy of doing enough to be enough. Appreciate them for who they are, how when they bring their strengths to work, everyone benefits. So get grounded in gratitude. It's 101, the gateway to joy. Once we recognize our abundance in the form of gratitude, it can spill over to help connect and serve others generously. Join me next week with our special guest, Dr. Leanne Davey with the Cardinal Rules of Conflict. Until then, stay generous, everyone. Thanks for listening to ROG, Return on Generosity podcast. Please help us grow by subscribing and reviewing us on your favorite podcast player. And for more information, visit bridgebetween.com. We grow when we give. We grow when we give. We grow when we give.